June 1954, Frances Roche married John Spencer, Viscount Althorpe, later the 8th Earl Spencer, in a spectacular ceremony at Westminster Abbey. At 18 years old, she became the youngest woman wed at the Abbey in the previous five decades. Queen Elizabeth II and other members of the royal family were among the guests at the service. John was the only son of Albert Spencer, 7th Earl Spencer, and his wife the former Lady Cynthia Hamilton. He was heir to his father's peerage and the Althorpe estate. Upon his father's death in 1975, he became the 8th Earl Spencer. So, when John married Francis, the pressure was on to produce his own heir who would one day inherit the Spencer peerage. But, according to royal experts, for Francis, the burden of delivering a healthy, male heir was too much and ultimately resulted in the demise of her marriage. The couple's first two children were girls, Sarah, born March 1955, and Jane, born February 1957. Then, in January 1960, to the couple's delight, their first baby boy was born, John, however, just 10 hours after his birth, John died. As proving them wrong, even Diana Piers Morgan backs King Charles as he slams doubters since the sad news of the Queen's death, the newly appointed King Charles III has been mourning in public alongside his family members. In his latest column, Piers Morgan backed the royal as he slammed doubters who may believe he can't fulfill the duties his mother had. Read more here. From this point, the pressure on Francis increased. Andrew Morton, best-selling biographer and author of Diana, Her True Story, claimed, the pressure was now on to produce a healthy, male heir and to that end, she was sent to various clinics in Harley Street, Wimpole Street, prodded and poked in the most intimate of areas by gynecologists and doctors. And all this time, she had, a sense of guilt that she was some kind of a failure, which of course she wasn't, because, as we now know, the sex of the child is determined by the male, not the female. A year later, in 1961, the Spencer's fourth child was born, a baby girl they named Diana. Speaking on the upcoming Channel 5 documentary Diana, The Curse of the Spencers, Mr. Morton said, there was widespread dismay because they were all anxious that it would be a baby boy. Diana until her dying day, thought that she was the unwanted child. In 1964, the long-awaited male Spencer heir arrived with the birth of Charles, but it was too late for Francis and Johnny's marriage. Angela Levin, an award-winning journalist and royal biographer, said, Francis gave birth to a boy, Charles, who was very healthy, she was absolutely thrilled. Johnny was thrilled. But the marriage was already in a very bad way. Mr. Morton described the atmosphere between Francis and John as poisonous, saying the pair could barely stand one another, and their arguments were vicious. In 1967, Francis left John to be with Peter Shandkid, an heir to a wallpaper fortune in Australia, whom she had met the year before. The pair married in 1969 but separated years later in 1988. Meanwhile, John married Rain, Countess of Dartmouth, in 1976. Diana was often present for her parents' heated exchanges, witnessing the painful impact of her mother's struggle on the marriage. The biographer claimed it deeply impacted the future princess, saying it had a profound effect on her. Ms. Levin added, she always remembered that and it upset her, it made her feel very unstable. 
and almost 20 years later, Diana was faced with the same task, but hers was arguably on a much larger scale. In July 1981, she married Prince Charles, the eldest son of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, in a huge wedding at St. Paul's Cathedral. Her royal duty as wife to the future king was to produce a healthy heir to the British throne. The princess fell pregnant within the first few months of her marriage and the following year, in June, she gave birth to her first child, a baby boy. Prince William's birth secured the line of succession, and according to royal historian Tessa Dunlop, Francis was overjoyed. Ms. Dunlop explained that Frances worried about the vulnerability of her daughter and she knows what the pressure to deliver an heir is like, let alone the heir to the throne. Richard Kay, a friend of the princess and longtime royal commentator, added, There must have been a sense of great relief on Frances' part that her daughter might not have to go through the constant ups and downs of childbirth, because her very first child was a boy. It secured the light to the throne and everything that came afterwards was a bonus. The fact that Diana was able to do that, in her very first pregnancy, Frances felt that it would take off a lot of pressure on her in the future and life would be a lot easier. However, while Frances' marriage became strained amid concerns over her ability to produce a son, Diana's began to break down after she gave birth to two. In 1984, two years after William was born, Diana and Charles had a second child, another boy. We only have the Diana version of events, that Charles came in, saw it was a boy, that he had sort of reddish, sandy Spencer colored hair, and half supposed to have said, oh, it's a boy, sort of with this disappointment and he promptly left, Mr. Case said. Rather than saving Charles and Diana's marriage, as Francis hoped it would, having two boys only made things worse. Mr. Morton said, Francis was talking to Prince Charles and he said he wished that the baby had been a girl, not a boy because he'd always wanted a girl. And Francis snaps at him, you should be grateful for having a healthy child, after what was really a very crass remark, given what had happened to her. The documentary's narrator said, it was an insensitivity that infuriated Francis. She knew very well that the loss of her son and the pressure she'd endured to have a boy had eaten away at her and her marriage. In 1992, after enduring a tumultuous marriage, Charles and Diana announced their separation. Four years later, in 1996, the pair officially divorced. Diana, The Curse of the Spencers will air on Channel 5 on Sunday at 9 p.m.